Hello and welcome to The Wire. Today we're talking about India's hunger crisis. The Global Hunger Index have released their report. In their report, India has been ranked at the 101st position in the list of 116 countries. India has slipped several spots from last year where it was on the 94th position. India's hunger crisis has also been compounded by the ongoing coronavirus and the pandemic. And we're going to break down as to what the government's response has been to the findings as well. The Indian government has gone on record to say that the findings are actually not true. They are quite shocking. They have even gone ahead to state that the methodology which was uh, used to put together this report is flawed. So to talk about this crisis and to talk about the government's response, we are joined today from Buster uh, by uh, Jean Dres, Professor Jean Dres, who is an economist, a social scientist. Uh, thank you so much, John, sir, for joining us and speaking with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. My first question to you before we even come to the government's response is the kind of big takeaways that this report gives us and the kind of scale and the magnitude that we see of the hunger crisis in India uh, and the significance of sorts of this report. Right. Uh, so, Sumida, I think that the Global Hunger Index is a very important wake-up call about the gravity of the nutrition situation in India. But we should not read too much into it, and we should not attribute to it a, pre a precision that it is not meant to have. For instance, we must remember that what is called Global Hunger Index 2021, it's not based on 2021 data, it's based on the latest available data for the component indicators, which in many cases would go back several years. So we have to be a little bit careful in using that in the index. We should look at the components also. And uh, I think that the index essentially has a communication value. It helps to generate public debate about hunger in India, as we have seen in the last couple of days. Uh, but it's not as if we learn much from it that we would not already know from the component indicators if we have paid attention. Uh, just to be more specific, uh, as you know, the index is based on four indicators. One is child stunting, then child wasting, then child mortality, and then something that's called prevalence of undernourishment, but I think it's actually something else and not very satisfactory. We can come back to that later if you like. But we already know from these component indicators, and in particular from data on child stunting, that firstly, India is one of the most undernourished, undernourished countries in the world. Secondly, that it has not progressed very much, if at all, in that respect in the last few years. Thirdly, that it is falling behind, in fact, has fallen behind other South Asian countries in that respect. And we also know from a number of household surveys, not from the Global Hunger Index, that things have got worse in the last couple of years because of the lockdown and the economic crisis that followed. So we know all that. But still, I would say the index, because it puts it all, it all together in one figure and it makes it possible to generate a ranking. And, you know, in India, people love rankings. So you see the first thing they do is to check where India is in the scale and then it compares it. The people compare it with other neighbors and so on. So it has some value in generating interest and debate. Now, it's interesting to now talk about the government's response. It has. How do you frame that? Do you <clears> think it has been of complete denial? Do you think there is any truth in the claim that they are making about the methodology being flawed or the fact that it can't be true as to how poorly <clears throat> India has uh, been ranked uh, in the current rankings? And generally, apart from the rankings, what do you think about the approach of the government to the prevalent hunger crisis? So I think that the response of the government, as I would read it in the statement that was released uh, by the Ministry of Women and Child Development, I would call it mischievous because it creates an impression that the Global Hunger, Hunger Index is based on opinion polls, which is not true at all. Uh, what is true is that one of the components of this index, the fourth one, uh, which is called prevalence of undernourishment, and actually is a kind of tentative indicator of calorie deficiency. I think there are methodological problems in that indicator, and in my opinion, it should not even be used at all. Uh, briefly, what that indicator is trying to do is to measure the proportion of people who have uh, deficient calorie intake. 
Now, the way you do it is that you begin with the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization's food balance sheets, which are themselves quite unreliable. That gives you some kind of figure about the aggregate calorie supply in the country. And then you make all kinds of heroic assumptions about the distribution of this calorie supply. And in fact, you need more than that, strictly speaking. You wish, what you also need to know is not only the distribution of the supply, but the joint distribution of intake and requirements because calorie requirements also vary a lot between different people. So until we know the joint distribution of intake and requirements, we can't really arrive at a reliable estimate of calorie deficiency. And that would really require dietary surveys that we don't have for all these countries. So I feel it's a kind of a hopeless exercise. Uh, it is true also that this year, in this series of assumptions and attempted shortcuts to uh, estimate calorie deficiency, uh, the Global Hunger Index has used some data collected by the Gallup uh, World Poll, which is a kind of polling organization. But that data is not opinions, it's data about facts. You know, like if you ask somebody, have you been skipping meals in the last 30 days? That's a factual question, it's not, a, it's not an, an opinion. So I think the government's attempted debunking of the index is really barking up the wrong tree and creating a wrong impression. But I would say that, yes, one of the four component indicators is not satisfactory. And I, I think it would, best be, it would be best to drop it. How should we then understand the Indian government's response <clears throat> to also <throat> mitigating this crisis and to tackling uh, the kind of hunger that we see and the kind of uh, malnourishment, the malnutrition uh, that is prevalent in the country? Well, I think that in the last few years, the Indian government has done very little to address the problem of nutrition and particularly child undernutrition. And for that matter, in general, uh, for children. In fact, there have been two rounds of severe budget cuts in child nutrition and child related programs, including education, school education, in the last few years. One in 2015, that was the first full budget of the uh, first NDA government. And then again this year, uh, this year, again, there were budget cuts in ICDS and even in school education, even though the overall budget increased by almost 20%. So I think there's a real failure to give adequate priority to the problem of nutrition and in particular child nutrition. And we should also remember that both schools and Anganwadis have now been closed for more than one and a half years, and they are still closed in many states despite persistent advice, not only from educationists, but also from doctors, that schools and Nangonadis should be reopened at all levels. So I think there's clear indications here with real failure to focus on this extremely important problem. Yeah. Uh, and in, in addition to this, just to continue this conversation, who do you think uh, are the kind of groups uh, who are currently bearing the most <clears throat> amount of brunt of this crisis and are facing uh, multiple so sorts of oppressions, which then compound the hunger crisis for them? Well, I think there's a lot of evidence that in the last two years, I mean, since the COVID crisis began, uh, the poorer and the marginalized sections of society have uh, suffered enormously from the economic crisis and the food insecurity that accompanied this health crisis. Uh, there are many surveys that show that uh, People have been uh, cutting on meals, they've been reducing their intake of nutritious food, especially non-vegetarian food. Uh, and that is almost bound to translate, although we don't have data to show it, but it's almost bound to translate into increasing levels of child undernutrition as well. So there's no doubt that it's the, basically the marginalized and the poor households who are bearing uh, the brunt of this crisis. Yeah. And uh, one last question is that what do you think is now then uh, the logical next step to this or the big takeaway or a message that you think is important, which needs to be taken from this uh, index as well as just from the general crisis that is often overlooked and completely invisibilized? I think that the most urgent things, thing to do is to reopen the schools and Anganwadis, especially across the country. We all know that it's in the first few years of life that 
all the action or most of the action happens as far as nutrition is concerned. And the only serious national program that we have for children below the age of six years is the Integrated Child Development Services, the annuality program. Uh, there is no argument at all for keeping these annuities closed now. So they should reopen. The feeding should restart. Uh, all the child development services should restart. And uh, these services should be strengthened. For example, uh, eggs should be now introduced in midday meals for uh, children, both in schools and annuities across the country, not just in a few states. Along with that, I would also say that the maternity entitlements should be universalized in line with the Food Security Act and the public distribution system should be expanded so that poor households who are still outside the ambit of the PDS can be included. So I think the work is cut out. It's a matter of giving adequate priority to this. All right. On that note, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing all these insights with us and putting the Global Hunger Index in perspective. Thank you. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.